Hey guys, it's Katie, and this is my life with beds. I wanted to share an update with you. Um, it was a little bit of a tough weekend. Friday morning, I had my cardiology appointment to go over the heart monitor results, and nothing showed up on the heart monitor. So, AFib didn't show up on the heart monitor. Pretty much nothing showed up on the heart monitor. So they're gonna install a permanent heart monitor, like a it's called a loop recorder. And it's like this big and it goes right under the skin over my left breast and it will continuously record heart information for up to three years. So um, they're going to be calling me to schedule that in a couple weeks. And I've also asked them to go ahead and order a tilt table test and they are going to. So that tilt table test is to check for POTS or some form of dysautonomia, which POTS is postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, and a lot of people with Ehlers-Danlos, like classical and hypermobile types, have POTS. Um, I don't think as many beds people have it, but there are some that do. So it'll be good to kind of rule that out or confirm that, because right now like I'm wearing compression socks at night and stuff, and if it's not POTS, then I probably don't need to be doing that. And so that will either be really freeing <laughs> or it'll confirm that I'm doing the right things. So I'm looking forward to having that test taken care of. I've wanted it for a few months now and it's been kind of difficult to get and I'm glad that they're gonna be ordering it. I'm also kind of grateful that there'll be a heart monitor um, installed. So that way I know that if there's anything abnormal, it'll I think it actually will notify the doctor. So that'll just kind of be something off my mind, which will be nice. Um, as disappointing as it was to not get a confirmed answer on Friday, ultimately I'm glad. So, um, we're down to four different things now as possibilities for the TIAs. The first thing would be POTS or dysautonomia. Um, it could be hemiplegic migraines, which would mean that they weren't TIAs, that they were migraines. But all the symptoms don't really fit completely with those, but I do have a neurology appointment in October. And then there's a possibility that the pseudoaneurysm in my left internal carotid is forming clots that are causing this. So I see a neurosurgeon on Tuesday, and I, I really kind of want that to be like a diagnosis of exclusion because I, I don't want somebody telling me that they want to go inside my brain and operate in there like that. No, like if there's a if there's a way to be like okay that's what these are and we're gonna find a way so that those clots don't happen without a blood thinner that's what I want to do I don't want anybody going in there to touch anything in my head no <laughs> so I'm really hoping that's not it so we've got pots dysautonomia hemiplegic migraines pseudoaneurysm or an undetected heart thing as of yet so. Those are the possibilities that I've heard thrown around, and that's where I am. So, other than that, um, I wanted to remind you that there is still an opportunity for you to do the research prior prioritization survey that came out um, last week from the Vets Collaborative. So remember, that survey is for you to rank the questions that were developed by the Vets Collaborative in July in Seattle. Those questions are research, potential research questions for the Vets community to rank in order of what they think is the most important thing to start with for research, because we really don't have enough research on anything. So do the survey if you haven't done it yet. If you have friends and family that want to do the survey, or you know people with Vets that aren't on Facebook, or aren't following this video, or anything like that, or this YouTube channel, and don't know about it, send it to them. Um, let's try to get as many people to answer the survey as possible that need it. So we want to reach as many people in the beds community as possible, basically. So I'm going to put it in this video in a little description. And um, yeah, thank you guys for all your support this week. It was really nice to hear all your kind words while I was waiting for the cardiology appointment and... I know a few of you reached out to me while I, after I got the results and I wasn't really quite ready 
to share it on YouTube. I needed a couple days of process, but it was really, really nice to have you guys reaching out to me and ask me how I was doing. So thank you for that. And, um, yeah, I'll talk to you soon. It's great to, great to have you guys.